Enzo Ferrari, Giotto Bizzarini, and Luigi Chinetti, a legendary trio that revolutionized the world of automobiles. Enzo Ferrari In December 1946, Autocar announced the debut of a new car manufacturer, Ferrari. The company, based at Maranello, plans to release three models, the 125 sports car, the competition model, and the Grand Prix. Though the company had not yet released a car, the motoring press gave the mark an enthusiastic welcome, thanks to the reputation of the company's founder, Enzo Ferrari. Ferrari was born in Modena in February 1898, the son of a metal worker. As a child, he was fascinated by car racing, and in 1908, he saw Felice Nazzaro's Fiat win the Coppa Florio. He knew then that he wanted to be a racing driver. But his path to becoming a manufacturer, was not easy. His father and brother died in 1916 and 1917, and he was conscripted into the army during World War I. He served as a blacksmith but was plagued by ill health and was discharged in 1918. He tried to find work with Fiat, but was unsuccessful. He eventually found work with a Torinese engineer, who was rebuilding light military vehicles for the civilian market. Ferrari's big break came when he met Ugo Sivoxai, a racing driver for CMN. Sivoxai introduced Ferrari to CMN, and Ferrari became a test driver. In October 1919, he had his first taste of competition, finishing fourth in his class in the Palma Poggio di Bersita hill climb. In November, Ferrari and Sivoxai competed in the 1919 Targa Florio. Ferrari finished ninth, and Sivoxai finished seventh. In 1920, Ferrari and Sivoxai both left CMN and joined Alfa Romeo, a company with a strong racing reputation. Ferrari quickly made a name for himself as a top performing driver and team manager. In 1946, he founded Ferrari and began to build his own sports cars. Within a matter of months, the motoring press was reporting race wins for Ferrari cars, and within a couple of years, it was as though Ferrari had always been a part of the racing and sporting car scene. Enzo Ferrari, with his relentless drive and single-minded focus, had achieved his lifelong dream of building his own sports cars and becoming a successful racing team manager. Today, Ferrari stands as one of the most iconic and successful car manufacturers in the world. Giotto Bizzarini the 250 GTO was designed by Giotto Bizzarini, who had joined Ferrari in 1957 as an engine designer, chassis engineer, and aerodynamicist. Bizzarini, who is widely regarded as the father of the GTO, had gained his engineering degree from the University of Pisa in 1953 and was still working occasionally as a visiting lecturer. He had access to the university's wind tunnel and made the most of it before he left Ferrari in the infamous mass defection of November 1961. By then the GTO was pretty well finalized. The new shape of the 250 GTO, built by Scoglietti, featured a lower nose and abruptly chopped cam tail. It was built on the 250 GT SWB chassis and supported by additional small tubular structures. The car was designed to be sleek and beautiful, and it was also faster than its predecessor. Power, some 300 bhp of it, came from the dry sump 3.0 liter 6 carburetor Testa Rossa engine, a full race unit built in the lightest possible materials. The engine was set further back in the chassis, mounted lower down, and mated to a new 5-speed gearbox. All of these changes were accepted as evolution by the FIA. The 250 GTO was driven by some of the most successful drivers of the time, and it was used to win many races and championships. Its combination of performance and beauty made it an instant classic, and it continues to be one of the most sought-after cars in the world. With only 39 units built, it's a rare and exclusive car and it's considered a true masterpiece of engineering and design. Even today, 
its design and performance are still considered to be ahead of its time. In conclusion, the Ferrari 250 GTO stands as a symbol of excellence in the automotive industry. It's not just a car, it's a work of art, a testament to the ingenuity and passion of its creator, Giotto Bizzarini. The 250 GTO represents a moment in time, a convergence of technology, performance and beauty. It's a reminder of the golden era of motorsports, a time when men pushed the limits of engineering to create machines that were not just fast, but beautiful. Even today, it continues to inspire and fascinate car enthusiasts around the world, a true icon of the automotive world. Its legacy will live on forever, as a symbol of the relentless pursuit of perfection and a reminder that the beauty of the machine can transcend time. Luigi Shinetti Luigi Shinetti was an Italian racing driver who immigrated to the United States during World War II. He competed in 12 24 hours of Le Mans, winning three of them and taking first prize twice at the 24 hours of Spa Francorchamps. He also knew his way around the car selling business. In 1958, Shinetti founded the North American Racing Team, NART which became one of the most successful endurance racing teams in America. During the Second World War, Shinetti moved to the United States. In December 1946, Shinetti flew back to Modena to meet with Enzo Ferrari. At this time, Enzo was thinking about starting a company and Shinetti recommended to build race, and eventually road, cars. Enzo agreed and he could not have picked a better representative. Chinetti officially started as the U.S. importer for Ferrari in 1954, he opened the first Ferrari dealership in the country, which was based in Greenwich, Connecticut. Chinetti Motors, was also the U.S. agent for Automobili Oscar of Bologna until 1967. Chinetti's reputation drew clients from across the country throughout his career. He also commissioned limited-run special variants of Ferrari road cars like the 275 GTS slash Pornart Spider and the 365 GTB slash 4 Daytona Nart Spider. In conclusion, Enzo Ferrari and his dedicated team have left a lasting legacy in the world of motorsports and automotive design. Their passion for speed and innovation continue to inspire future generations of engineers and enthusiasts. His legacy in the world of racing and car dealership is still remembered and celebrated today, and his contributions to the sport will always be remembered as a major part of Ferrari's history. That is all for now, I'm Brian Schumacher of the RienziReport.com. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to tune in for our next week for another historical presentation.